this lecture we'll go a little more deeply into the idea of market segmentation. There are multiple approaches for dealing with market segmentation. In the concentration approach, a company develops one marketing strategy for a single market segment. The concentration approach allows a firm to specialize, focusing on focusing all of its efforts on one market segment. Porsche, for example, directs all of its marketing efforts toward high-income individuals who want to own high-performance vehicles. A firm can generate a large sales volume by penetrating a single market segment and, and penetrating it deeply, as long as that market segment, of course, is large enough. The concentration approach may be especially effective when a firm can identify and develop products for a segment that's ignored by other companies in the industry. In the multi-segment approach, the marketer aims its marketing efforts at two or more segments, developing a marketing strategy for each. Many firms use a multi-segment approach that includes different advertising messages for different segments. Many other firms also use a multi-segmented approach to make to market segmentation, such as manufacturing, the manufacturer of Raleigh bicycles, which has designed separate marketing strategies for racers, for tourers, for commuters, and for children. So when you think about it, there's, uh, there's ways to, each of those areas can be addressed directly, or you can decide to go after one very concentrated approach. If you think about it, it's how much value is in that, how large the segment is, how much value is in that segment, and how much you can exploit that segment, or do you need to go to other segments in order to generate the kind of growth your company needs. Another concept called niche marketing is a narrow market segment that focuses efforts on one small, well-defined group that has a unique and specific set of, specific set of needs. Niche segments are, uh, are usually very small compared to the total market of products. Many airlines who uh, cater to first-class travelers who comprise only 10% of the international tra air travel. But to meet the needs of these elite customers, air, airlines include special perks along with spacious seats and the like. So they go after that one small niche and try to build, uh, try to build a, um, a loyal customer base around providing that partic the particulars of that particular segment and what that particular segment is looking for. For a firm to successfully use a concentration or multi-segment approach to market segmentation, there are several requirements to be met. First of all, consumer needs for the product have to be heterogeneous across the overall target market. Different groups want different things. The segments must be identifiable in their differences and divisible in their differences. In other words, you have to be able to get at the customers that want some some features but not others and be able to figure out how you can target those markets specifically. The total market must also be divided in a way that allows for estimated sales, um, you know, the, the potential for revenue that comes from that particular segment, the costs associated with delivering it, and the profits that come from the segments. So you can compare segments to one another and understand the differences in how the product might, might has to function or work and what kind of messaging <clears throat> you might have to deliver. At least one segment must have enough profit potential to justify developing and maintaining a special marketing strategy just for that segment. A firm must be able to reach the chosen market segment with a particular market strategy. And each to reach it, you have to be able to address that market with its, your messages so that they know you exist, they understand why they're getting the features that they need or want, they know how to get to your product, and you've, they essentially begin the dialogue of deciding to invest in your product. They know about it. Those are the addressable customers, the ones that you that actually you have managed to communicate with and understand what you're trying to provide them so that you can begin this exchange process.
So here are the basic segments that come apart that you, you think about whenever you're trying to think of a market segmentation. There's several variables that you use to develop your segments. Demographics, that's your age, sex, race, ethnicity, income, education, occupation, family size, religion, social class, things about people that we know about or think about. Um, these characteristics are closely related to customers' product needs and their purchasing behavior, and they can be readily measured. For example, deodorants are often segmented by sex, secret and soft and dry for women, old spice and men and for men, for example. Other types of demographics, you could see how you could segment your products differently. Different message because people want different things. Maybe the same kind of product can serve those different things, but you have to message them the way they understand the value that they're they're willing to pay for. There's geographic, which could be climate differences, terrain differences, natural resources, population density, subculture values. These influence customers' needs and product for and product usage as well. Climate, for example, influence customers' purchases of automobiles, uh, clothing, heating and condition air conditioning equipment, leisure activities, etc. Uh, then we get a little more uh, psychology oriented. There's psychographic types of things, differences in personality characteristics, motives, lifestyles. Soft drink marketers provide their products in several types of packaging, including two liter bottles or cases or cans to satisfy different lifestyles or motives, so the psychological characteristics of why people are choosing to buy the product. Behavioristic is the last set where you look at people behave differently they do different things some uh, times some people are athletic so you market to athletic people sometimes some people are uh, perhaps like uh, travel so you can market into travel things these are behaviors that people be do that are distinct from one another but they're in but there are groups of people that do each one these characteristics generally involve aspects of certain aspects of product use. So that's when you think about it, there's, more, there's many combinations of demographic, geographic, psychographic, behavioristic that you could use to identify a market segment that you could uniquely focus on. And if no one else is focusing on that product, you essentially have the market to yourself as long as you could construct a product that meets the needs and you can message to the people that want that product. Don't forget that addressable part, you have to be able to message those people. Um, in the next lecture, we'll talk about marketing mix as you address your various market segments.